Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this debate. This is the final debate, and the motion is this House believes that the monarchy should be abolished. Um, can we have the first speaker for the proposition, please? Yeah. Hello, I'm Siobhan Monaghan, and this House believes that the monarchy should be abolished. Everything about the monarchy is anachronistic and should have been abolished along with the same time as the headings. To succeed the previous monarch, he must be a member of the Church of England, a religion originally fabricated by a monarch. This completely contradicts the ideas of upholding all religious beliefs as equal within the UK that we are trying to promote. And does the law not state that you can't not hire someone because of their religious beliefs? We are one of the very few countries left with a remaining monarchy. And this could be viewed as old and outdated by countries abroad. Last year, Dubai had 10 million visitors, no thank you, and they are quickly becoming the biggest tourist destination in the world. Why? Because they are modern, they are new, and they are developed. The UK might well be missing out on something here. It's not, no thank you, it's not fair or right or just that someone has the hereditary right to power, rule over our country, and money through an accident of birth. Every other system in the UK is meritocratic, and you can work your way up through the ranks if you do put in the work. No matter the level of work you've put in, you cannot become a sovereign. We as a nation are trying to break down social strata and create pathways through the different levels of classes. It's completely hypocritical that we're doing this if we continue to have this unbreakable barrier between us as people and them as the monarchy. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, may we have the first speaker for the opposition, please? Thank you. My name is Arnold, and I'm an opposition. This House believes that monarchy definitely should not be abolished. Such an easy statement. Saying that the monarchy should be abolished is an absolutely disgraceful statement to say, which me and my colleagues completely disagree with. Firstly, having a, a monarchy gives us all, as a country, stability, identity, and pride. The monarchy today, and many years ago, have led the country through times of war, just a minute please, financial times, and even fashion. Look at Queen Victoria. The monarchy has offered Britain much power and equality between ourselves, countries all over the world. We have countries such as Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, and the Pacific Islands. Yes, please. People who don't necessarily... I think it's all to do with coming together. I believe that the Queen is, is, is there as a figurehead, someone who's there to sort of show us the way to go, someone who's there, pardon, sorry, sorry about that, yeah, and it's also, to be, it's also about being British, it's about expressing yourself, it's about expressing your culture. Going back to my point, if the monarchy in some, if monarchy, if the monarchy is, is, is oops, sorry, if the monarchy in some cases is then abolished, who, 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 who would be there to express who we are? Who would be there to actually lead us through these times that we're going through, 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 fi through financial times, through, through many of the stuff that is going on through today? Now, I'm sure the proposition may be, may be waiting for me to say that the, the, that the monarchy brings, brings much tourism and that the monarchy is paid for by, by the taxpayer. Might, might I just add, the taxpayer only pays 50 to 62 pounds per year. That's per month, that's not 0.052 pence per month. In fact, if, if we're talking about money, let's think about tourism. Just the, the Diamond Jubilee itself, it bought 10 billion pounds per year. That's 12 point, oh, sorry. Oh, oh sorry. Thank you. Uh, second proposition speaker, please. Hello, my name is Sophie. So, Syria, leader Assad, an unelected wielder of power, a civil war, thousands of people dead. Libya, leader Gaddafi, again an unelected wielder of power, a civil war, thousands of people dead. Now, I'm not saying that dear old Elizabeth is going to wage war against her own citizens here, but there's a pattern emerging. The principle is, is that a country cannot be truly democratic if its head of state is unelected and hereditary. 
The whole idea of a monarchy makes Britain hypocritical. We are supposed to be one of the world leaders in democracy, yet we're being led by someone who's in that position due to fortune of birth. How does that look to the ever-increasing numbers of countries within the Commonwealth, some of whom are striving for democracy, and others who are emerging as world leaders? Furthermore, the Queen is not just the head of our state, she is the head of the state church, a very specific faith group. Yeah? Why Bring quite a lot to, to, to society ourselves. Looking here in the audience, we have many teenage people and many people... Sorry, what I'm trying to get is the, 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 the monarchy has brought many, many charities and many princes, trust Duke of Edinburgh, and without the monarchy, many of those things wouldn't be there. The, ch the, the monarchy gives out money to other countries that, that, that are in need. And you may be saying, yes, pardon. Oh, sorry. So, um, again, like I was saying, head of state is, not the, is only the head of the state church, a very specific faith group. Where does that place her in the multi-ethnic, multi-religious Britain that we are today? How can she represent and then meaningfully speak for that nation if what she believes in differs from the vast majority of people within? In addition to this, the Queen's funding was increased by £5 million this year to carry out her official duties. And the sovereign grant was set at £36.1 million for the 2013-2014 academic year. That doesn't even begin to include the figures spent on security for the British monarchy. Thank you. Uh, second speaker for the opposition, please. The Queen represents our politics in its most pure state, no underhand dealings. The Queen allows our country to look good on state visits where the Prime Minister would probably not be appropriate. Talking about other countries, the Queen brings a lot of tourism to the country. Events such as the Queen's Diamond Jubilee bring people from all over the world. The money from tourism that we get more than pays for what she takes. In addition to that, she also pays tax. From talking about the Queen's Diamond Jubilee, I go to other traditions and ceremonies that the monarchy brings us. The monarchy gives us bank holidays, which is the royal weddings. This allows us for a day to stand tall as a nation and stand proud knowing that our monarchy is there, that we have an identity as a nation. Coming from standing as a nation, the, mon the monarchy reset represents Britain, its most pure state. The Queen is Britain. The monarchy sets us apart from other countries and shows that we understand our history is important, not right now, and are able to incorporate that into today's society where the monarchy is less vital, but no less needed. Yes. The Queen is Britain. Like I said in my point, her religion is different to that of the vast majority of people. I'm getting How to is that. She Britain? To refute the proposition's point about democracy, the monarchy is the reason we have democracy today. Henry VIII set up the democratic system by making the House of Commons and setting up uh, what actually democracy was. So without, without Henry VIII, we would not have democracy. We would not have parliament. I'm sure that says something about how important the monarchy is to us. Another point that I can refute about there. What they've said. The monarchy is Britain, pure and untainted. It, re it represents the diverse society we have today. It shows that. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd now like to re take the opportunity to invite points from the floor. Um, yes, go over there, please. Um, okay, um, you said that um, the taxpayers only have to pay uh, X amount every year. However, that X amount that we pay every year times every single payer, every single taxpayer in England, times every single year. That money could be that can that money could be wasted on NHS. That money could be wasted on, on other things. Why does it have to go to them? Personally, what can you do with 0.052 pounds pence per year? Um, no, actually, where did you get your information from? From The Guardian, I heard it's 65p per person. 65p per person times every single taxpayer in England, times every single year. I think I can do a lot with that money. Thanks. Okay. 
Um, I think that I think that small amounts of money is enough to pay is a fair amount to pay from each of us. I, I do not begrudge the Queen that amount of money, that small amount of money each year to represent our nation to other countries, to represent what it means to be British. Okay, um, the lad of death. Um, that one. Uh, Cardinal Oisman, do you believe that having a president would that further highlight elitism in this country, as we can see by the politics? By having another head of state, such as a president, which may be in your point, I'm not sure, but would that highlight elitism? But surely elitism, but surely elitism, the Queen is the most elite. If we, have a, if we take, look at society, who is the most elite person in society, the richest person, really, if we look at objects and money is the queen she owns everything really she owns the land itself isn't that the most elite um, yes yeah but having a having a president coming from the same system as the politics and the politicians and we voting for the men wouldn't that coming through the same system show a big divide in this country. Like the Queen obviously shows a big divide, but wouldn't having the President do the same thing? Um, I don't think so, no, because a President could get to that stage, as Siobhan said, by working their way up the ranks, but the Queen couldn't. So actually it wouldn't be elitism, because they could have been someone from Coventry and worked their way up through politics in order to be that President. But in order to be a sovereign, you need to be either born into it or married into it. And in fact, to marry into one of them, you're not going to be from Coventry, are you? There you go. Um, yes, gentlemen, stand up. In 2007, the BBC took a poll that said that 80% of people would like the monarchy to stay intact. Now, who would decide that the monarchy would be abolished? In 2011, YouGov took a survey and 56% of people said that it shouldn't be abolished. You can't have accurate data unless you take it from every single person in the UK. Um, yeah, here. Yeah. So who would abolish it then? Like you just said, he said, um, so is that your answer to the question? Cool. How, how do you mean who would abolish it? Do you mean like who would actually sign the paper to say that it's abolished? No, he means 80% would say it wouldn't be abolished. Mm -hmm. Do you say that they should be? 56% yeah. Every single get year. Accurate, reliable data. Um, yes, the girl at the back there. Um, what does the Queen actually do? Like, other than charity, because anyone can do, like, yeah. The Queen represents us on state visits to other people, to other countries that are around the globe, but maybe the Prime Minister wouldn't be the best person to send. The Queen allows us bank holidays and brings us tourism that more than pays for what we give the Queen. And might I just add, if you add up the numbers and the actual chain it does bring, tourism will bring people bringing money to hotels, to food. That's bringing money to, to, the local, to the local British businesses, which can then mean they're paying taxes, which can then mean they are actually contributing to our society. That could mean that our, our, our community itself could improve. Uh, yes, gentlemen in the scar. Hey, um, my question's to Basel as well. You talk about the Queen being some form of celebrity figure, even though the monarchy is meant to represent Britain, not for celebrity figures. Like, for example, we could get any other celebrity in the UK to go to different countries to show us, but use the Queen as some form of pop culture phenomenon when, in fact, she was born into to run this country, not sell this country to other people. She is there as a figurehead, as we've already said. She might not have much dealing with the actual politics of today's society, but she does bring us, she goes to other countries and shows them what it means to be a British person. If we didn't have the Queen, well, if we got rid of the Queen, do you want us to be like the French after their revolution? They ended up with a dictator that was power hungry and embezzled money. Do you want us to end up like that? Speaking um, on the French, I haven't really recalled 
a mass French rebellious movement against the people to their dictator, like you would see in other countries. So I think the French are doing all right, if, and they don't even have a queen or a king. So. No, do you remember the French Revolution? They got rid of their queen, and they had a dict. And after they got rid of the queen, they had a dictator. I can't remember his name. They told me it earlier. And he was power hungry. He went on a power mad rage over the place and embezzled loads of money. He was not good for the country. If we get rid of our queen, what's to say we won't end up like that, even with the parliament? Who's going to stand above the parliament who is unassailable, who's pure and true as a British person with the good of all of Britain in their hearts? They come from the, they come from the monarchy, so they are completely unbiased to anywhere. Our queen herself is, herself is from a German background. She, she knows about all the diversity that we have in society. Therefore, she is able to be on top of everything without having a biased opinion on anything because she's not from the lower regions of society. She is in a category of her own. The monarchy is able to stand there above the rest of us without any opinion on where the old... Con we would say Conchie's better than anywhere else. It's not true, but you know. <laughs> the Queen doesn't have that. In what my, and what my colleague is actually trying to get across to you is you have to think about the bigger picture, not just what is going on now. Um, okay, uh, the girl at the back who's been standing for a while. <laughs> <laughs> my question's for... I can't remember what your school's called. Um, the Queen it symbolises our country and all its history. So basically, by saying if you want to abolish the monarchy, are you basically saying you're abolishing the history of England? The, the meaning of history is in the past, so it's history and it's still going to be there no matter what we do in our future. So no, we're not going to abolish the history because it's still there, it's history. So well, regardless of what we do in our future, the history is still going to be there. Um, we can't allow time for any more questions. Uh, so can we have the summary speaker for the opposition, please? Starting with the point you made about history, I think that it's important to carry, we, well, we think that it's important to carry on with the, with the monarchy because it will help us to remind ourselves of our history and without history we, we might repeat ourselves like from the things that happened previously. And uh, we also believe that the Queen gives us our national identity. Um, she's not only needed in this country but she's also involved in, in other countries and they're also the reasons why we think the monarchy shouldn't be abolished. Um, events such as the Diamond Jubilee and the Royal Wedding bring us together, no matter your colour or religion. It's just that it's, it's just something we can celebrate together for, for one day. And it also brings a lot of money to the country as we gain a lot of tourists, that, uh, gain a lot of, like, a in, gain a lot of um, attention from other countries because obviously things like that go on TV. And uh, the fact that the Queen is German also attracts international attention and shows that she's not biased. And if we abolish the monarchy, it's almost sending across a message that we're forgetting who we are as Britain, as British people, sorry. Um, the, we also found out that the royal family funded democracy. Uh, King Henry VIII, built a section of parliament for the people from local areas to debate and that had an influence on how the UK was run. Um, going back to the point I made earlier about tourist attractions, this also creates a lot of jobs which means more income and recently that's been a problem we've been having lately. And um, the people that gave us our voice and recognition, ironically enough, were the royal family, the royal family institution and this also goes back to when King Henry was in power. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, may we have the final speaker for the proposition, please? Secretive, having recently lobbied itself out of our freedom of information laws. The monarchy lobby government ministers 
for their own private agendas, for their own for financial benefits. They're an extremely high-cost institution, money that could be so easily spent on nurses, doctors, teachers, police officers at times of sweeping spending cuts. Also, the Queen and Prince Charles must be asked consent if any of their private agenda is going to be discussed in Parliament. A lot of people hold the belief that if the monarchy were to be abolished, then tourism would suffer in the UK. As a tour tourism agency visit Britain, their chief acknowledged that tourism would not suffer at all if the monarchy was abolished. Our history is always going to be here, no matter what we do in the future. People come here for our history, you said that yourself. If we, do, if we abolish our current system, it doesn't mean we've abolished the history. And you pick up on the point that the royal family created democracy. Actually, it was the Greeks that brought democracy to the wider world. Um, also, many said the Queen has done an exceptional job whilst her time on the throne, but I put it to the House to remember a time or a speech or a time of crisis and celebration where the Queen actually offered inspiration to all of us that we can remember. If I was to say that Britain was a dictatorship, it would take me a long time to count the number of shocked faces in the room. But a dictatorship is when somebody has supreme authority. Our constitution, written by our forefathers, states that the Queen is the supreme authority. Britain, the world's first democratic dictatorship. A very difficult decision um, with the two teams, and obviously as people take points from the floor, what you find then is that we're able to write down more comments about how you strengthen, how you respond. Um, so we have an awful lot of information and criteria to, to, to work on that we've just, just discussed. So um, a very difficult decision because you are all very articulate, great command of vocabulary, you've clearly done your research and brought a number of developed points that were really interesting and relevant to, to, to the argument. So um, very difficult decision. However, we have made our decision and, and the winners of the debate for 2013 is the Cardinal White. Thank you.